three friends, thousands of movies, a million TV shows, and an infinite number of opinions. This is Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. It rhymes. Every week, we review new releases and spotlight an older film that you just might want to add to your watch list. So hold on to your butts, because here are your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. All right, we are here with a very special late night episode of Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between. Frank, you and I just watched the Emmys. We did. This is our reaction episode. Yes. How are we feeling? Uh, you know, it felt like most of the things went to plan. There were a couple of surprises. I have a couple of thoughts about the format of the show in general. Uh, I know you're not happy. I was a little bored with a lot of the winners, honestly. Like, I just, there was a lot of opportunity to surprise us and reward some really incredible new talent and new shows. And I didn't see as much of that as I would have liked. There were a few standout moments, but there were just a few things that I didn't love. For me, I thought they did a good job of rewarding some of the newer shows and talent and things like that. And I mean, a lot went to limited series, but I mean, that's because of the current environment that we're in. But I think that's an unfair characterization when you break down some of the first time winners and what shows and things ended up winning for certain. Uh, I mean, we saw Abbott Elementary, our new favorite comedy, get some love tonight with um, Cheryl Lee Ralph's win, which was amazing and one of the best speeches of the night yeah she absolutely crushed it yeah Yeah. and then quinta brunson won for writing which i was really happy to see personally yeah uh, especially as the creator of the show to take on something so personal to her from what it seemed like and to find out that the show decided to donate their emmy budget to public schools for supplies and things like that Makes me love it all the more. It makes me think that that might have been one of the reasons why they didn't win more awards. <laughs> I guess you could make a case for that. I mean, those are really the only, like, standout surprises for me, though. I mean, Ted- So, like, Squid Game? Um, Huge. I, I mean, mean, remember when Squid Game was nominated? This is the first foreign language TV show to ever be nominated by all, the television So they won Academy. for directing, and then Lee Jung Jae won for acting. Yeah. I think it's been so long since Squid Game for me that, like, I was really ready to see them recognize Yellow Jackets getting shut out, you know, is, like, a heartbreaker for me. But also Severance not getting anything. Like, that's a real bummer. And and look, I love Succession. I really do. I have no, like, I can't be like, that didn't deserve to win. So Succession won three awards. They won, uh, Matthew McFadden won for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy. They won for directing, and then they won the best overall drama prize. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not... I think they had 25 nominations. Yeah. So it's not for the primetime Emmys for the for the live show. I don't know what they won on the technical side on the back end, but I didn't feel like it was overly succession or even overly Ted Lasso like we had seen in previous years where we saw clean sweeps. I felt like there was a lot of Ted Lasso because one, I mean, Brett Goldstein won, Jason Sudeikis won, the director won, the female director, and then it won for best comedy. And look, again, I love Ted Lasso, but there was some new blood in there and they recognized Ted Lasso so many times last year that I was kind of hoping they would go in a new route. Well, I think that for a lot of people, you know, there's like a sophomore slump and for for different shows and things like that. But this show just kept hitting it out of the park. So it was hard to be mad at it for winning again. But like you mentioned before, Abbott Elementary, Best Supporting Actress. Uh, they also, um, who won Best Actress? Uh, Jean Smart for Hacks. For she Hacks. got the double. That's Yeah, she, well, she won last year. We yeah. need to watch Hacks, I think, yeah. <laughs> was one yeah. of the big takeaways. <clears throat> and I'm taking credit for Abbott Elementary. That was all me. 
Yeah. Uh, I threw that I, on. You got mad at me. I wanted to watch that. That was not your idea. No, no. It sir. absolutely was. I am taking credit for that. Um, can we just really quickly talk about the format before we go on to some of the other winners? The weird dance number opening, which, I mean, I'm all for a fun dance break. I normally am a big, big fan. This was not working for me. So I found Keenan's stand-up about 10 minutes later to be much more entertaining. Yeah, agreed. And I feel like that should have been the opening for the show. You do the normal montage of some of the icons of and nominees and uh, of the shows or maybe like Panther the audience, maybe a little crowd work, and then like Keenan do his thing. That was much better for me. I also hated how sh- how strict they were with the time restraints for the award winners. Because for some of these people, they're never going to get back up on that stage and to see their time cut to 45 seconds or 30 seconds almost immediately just seemed to do a disservice to those people. But you know I'm a big fan of speeches, so I always yeah, hate when that happens. I'm all for just letting them have their moment. I understand that you're going to go long and there's certain restrictions with that. But at the same time, like you said, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. That moment when they started playing off Jennifer Coolidge, who is a fucking icon, and this woman deserves that moment in that recognition for her role in the white Lotus and watching them play her off was like really angering for me. (laughs) Yeah. It was a triggering moment for someone who probably won't ever be recognized by the television Academy again. And that's, I mean, we don't know. She's the only returning cast member for season two. Oh, so. that is true. <laughs> and I mean, listen, I, I fell in love with Stifler's mom, you know, in 1999, like just yeah. about every other boy <laughs> did at that time. So um, I'm happy to see her win and happy to see her recognized for her, like you said, iconic career and what she's done and things like that. But yeah, yeah I just, I, for me, I hate the sketches. I hate the bits. I hate the extended time with the talking from uh the mcs different things like that i just i want the speeches because that's where you're going to get the most genuine yeah. real moments and i'm always a candid person you know and i know it's ironic for me to say that because we're watching scripted television <laughs> and tvs and movies but like in award shows that's what i'm there for i want roberto benini climbing over chairs yeah <laughs> i want brent goldstein cussing on Again, two years in a row, just so his family can't hear it and they cut the feed. Those are the things that I love. And that's what I want to continue to see. And I feel like I get robbed of that because people aren't able, they're not given the opportunity to express themselves. How do you feel about the Jimmy Kimmel bit and him staying on the floor throughout Quinta Brunson's Emmy moment? Well, he did give her the thumbs up. But I felt like he was kind of pulling focus a little bit. But I felt like she did a great job. She she rolled with the punches. She acknowledged Jimmy. She acknowledged her cast. Yeah. Uh, and she's, I've, I, I think when you're in comedy, it's a little bit easier for you to like ad lib and work with that and just kind of roll with those punches. I did notice, though, that like the camera stayed at the one angle for like the side angle for her. So as not to show him. On the ground, they they I I don't think the they were a fan of the bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. I it, I get the feeling both he and P. Davidson, who admitted, <laughs> did not show up to rehearsals. Yeah, <laughs> that that was the case for the both of them. Um, what did you think of the format as far as you had one time a presenter would come out, say the nominees, present the award, and then for the next the very next award they would have the announcer say the nominees and then someone would come out do a one or two line hated it spiel and then present the award i hated it i didn't understand the need for the announcer in those moments i also did not love the announcer i think she had a couple of good little jokes and things but overall it was not really in keeping with the tone of the event um and it just seemed awkward to have those weird moments where she's introducing the nominees and then a presenter comes out and still does a bit like just have it all be one thing. Yeah. I just, I feel like there's just too much time wasted walking people on stage, walking people off stage. Let two people go up at one time. They present two awards. You keep it moving. Like I think that there's ways that I could efficiently 
direct the Emmys arrogantly I say this, <laughs> um, with the proper cast and crew with with minimal uh, time delays and give everyone the opportunity to just shine and speak what they want. Also, to the point of the speeches, we saw this year the thank you credits. Yeah, what was that? It looked like people who, uh, and I, I'm guessing, who were nominated could submit ahead of time a list of people they wanted to thank in case they won and they were, weren't prepared right. to win. Uh, but I hated it. I hated it too. The only people who got it right was John Oliver. Yeah. Because they made an Oscar Isaac joke. And I mean, I would be jealous if I didn't get to meet Oscar Isaac too. So it was just really funny what they did because, you know, they get it. But overall, I was not a fan. I just felt like it was distracting. It was distracting. And again, a disservice to the people to just say, oh, by the way, you know, X, Y, Z, as opposed to letting someone get there on their own. Yeah, it made it feel rehearsed, or not necessarily rehearsed, but I don't know, it just, I think it took away from the impromptu feeling of when someone wins and has to figure out who to thank and how to do it. And yeah. I, I, I'm totally fine with them having like a pre-prepared list of names. I get that. But this, like you said, it was distracting on the screen and it just kind of took away from focus. Yeah, I agree. Also, that dumb Kia promotion commercial thing with four lines being read, that could have gone. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. That, that's, that was three minutes I could have saved them right there off the top. <laughs> and we could have spread that around to all those nominees. Um, also, I, I don't, this is gonna, I don't know how to say this properly. Gina Davis is incredible. Yes. She is an icon. She is, and she's a part of Menza. She's a fucking genius. Um, she's super awkward. <laughs> Presenting her like a Lifetime Achievement Award or something like this just does not work. Because, it was an award for her foundation and yeah, their work. You're yes. right. I'm sorry. But she just, it was just a really weird, awkward exchange yeah. because she's just not like, welcoming to that like and you know i get it as a genius it's hard for us to just okay. <laughs> relate sometimes uh -huh. and not be awkward but you know you know she just she rolled with the punches but it just the whole thing just felt weird and forced i did not love that's fair that uh that exchange again totally proud of gina davis and her foundation and everything that she's worked for so it's yeah. not about not shining a light on what they did but i felt like that's something that could have been scripted and put together and given her the opportunity to present her work in a better way. But I just did not love how that went down. That's fair. Um, I do want to talk about some of the things that I did love. Uh, Amanda Seyfried winning for The Dropout. So deserving. I was so thrilled to see that she won that uh, Lead Actress Award. Because that show really just bowled me over. And her performance is the stuff of legend. So I uh, was thrilled to see her take a win. Yeah. And I, I feel like we need to watch dope sick now because Michael Keaton just crushes it as always. And, yeah. you know, I loved his story about like the little TV and the neighbors coming to, to watch and like what it meant to him and things like that. Cause he's just, he's, I, I, I get that. Like having a, a black and white TV at one point. <laughs> So it's really fun to know that, you know, those were his humble beginnings from a raffle that his dad won. And that's just, it's so awesome. And I just, I, he's so engaging yeah. when he's doing his speeches. And I was just really excited for him to like kick the show off. What did you think of kind of the, the big, not necessarily sweep, but there was a lot of White Lotus between yeah. Jennifer Coolidge, who we mentioned, Murray Bartlett, the show won for best uh, limited writing, directing, writing, directing. Yeah, best limited series. <laughs> uh, it was not my favorite show of the year. To me, my brother described it as white mess, and I could not think of a more appropriate title than than that for what the show was. It was just a bunch of white people doing dumb shit yeah. the whole time and just getting in their way when they didn't necessarily have to. Uh, was it well acted? Yes. Was it well directed, well scripted? Sure. All of those things. I have nothing negative to say about the show in the technical aspects and what they, it just did not reach me on a level that it reached the voters. I would have voted for something else. 
Uh, mainly, I would have gone for Under the Banner of Heaven. That was probably my favorite limited series for the year. That The whole show and everything that they were representing was just incredible. And I thought the performances overall could have rivaled that of White Lotus. What about you? Um, I, I, I mean, I liked White Lotus more than you did, I think. I... I agree with you that it probably I think I would have voted for Jennifer Coolidge for sure, but I don't know that I would have voted for any of like Well, you were happy to see Murray Bartlett win. I was happy to see Murray Bartlett win. I was not mad about that, but just in general, I I forgot who he was up against in that category. But I just want to say, like, I probably would have voted for the like of what was nominated. I probably would have voted for the dropout for best limited. Because we haven't watched Dope Sick yet. So, and because Under the Manor of Heaven was not nominated for that category. Yeah, the only thing it was nominated, Andrew Garfield was the only person nominated from that show, which is yeah. a travesty in my opinion. But I would have loved to see him get up on that stage in that suit. I though. was going to say that white Damn. suit, he was rocking <laughs> that look very much so. Yeah. What did you think about the setup this year? Not doing more like doing a Golden Globe style with like the stage kind of in the middle. Like tables in the background, people back there, not just a backdrop. Did you I find it distracting? Did you like it? Because my eye kept going to certain people yeah. when they would turn around because of like the lipstick they were wearing of the color of like, their shirt or their jacket. And I almost found it distracting at times. I wasn't bothered by like the, the different locations of the stage because they had like different spots. I thought that was cool and that design. But I agree that anytime there they were on a stage where there was a table behind them and you could see whoever was sitting there, that was distracting. Yeah. Like looking at Coleman Domingo's face, looking at Alexandra Daddario's face, looking at different people yeah. in the background Lily throughout their shots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it was – jarring's not the right word, but something was just amiss, right? And I just found it at times hard to focus because of how the camera was focused on more than just the presenter or the award winner at that time. Yeah, yeah. I did think Keenan did a fantastic job. Keenan did do a great job. And it's really a testament to his staying power and just overall likability, I think, in the industry. I mean, like they said multiple times, he's been doing this for 30 plus years. I loved the Kel uh, cameo. I was Dancing with the stars. Yeah. (laughs) Kel Mitchell. Yeah. For the newer people, if you don't remember all that and... Good Burger before that oh, many, man. many years ago. Um, one last thing that I want to say before we uh, start to wrap. Well, two last things. One, loved Lizzo's win and her speech really resonated with me. And I just love her her passion and her excitement and everything that she represents. So I was really thrilled. I still haven't watched <laughs> Give It Up for the Big Girls, but um, I really, really want like I just want to celebrate her at every chance that we get. Yeah, it was it was great uh watching her present and then win. You know, it's not something I think she's the only one. Yeah. Uh for tonight who was able to do both. Uh I did think that while Oprah was poignant as always, I felt like she talked for too long. She did. Uh but uh, she's known for that, right? She's yeah. got a whole talk show. Uh so that's what she does. True. Can't really be mad at her, but it, again, it just felt like, you know, you can't play the presenter off stage, though. And it was funny because she talks about how it's so hard to get an Emmy and like that it's the most prestigious award in television. And then I forget who it was. I, I think it was Michael it was, Keaton, and he gets up there. He's like, "Don't you have like thirty of these?" Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, of all the people that could have said that, having it come from Oprah's probably not um, the wisest for that particular moment. But um, and then lastly, you know, like I've said, I was really rooting for Yellow Jackets, and it breaks my heart that they did not get any wins tonight. But I was particularly rooting for Melanie Linsky. I've long been a huge fan of hers and I just love to see her be recognized and awarded for her talent. However, giving it to Zendaya is probably the only person that I was not going to complain about because like her performance in episode five of the season of Euphoria was unbelievable so it's like i i can't be mad at it i totally get it she totally deserves it i'm still a little bummed though 
I can understand that. One thing that I'm always struck by, uh, in, not in uh, for Zendaya, but with both of the uh, winners from Squid Game, how polite they were. Yeah. Thank you for opening the doors for us. Well, it, they a lot of those people they don't realize that they they've kicked that door down. Yeah. Right. And they need to be more deserving and accepting of the credit and realize that when you create fantastic content, people will come and watch it. And I'm I'm so proud that that show gets nominated. And, you know, I hope it opens the door for more. Yeah. You know, like we saw Parasite doing things like that. But it was something that I'm just so struck by that culture of them being so genuine and so polite and their acceptance speeches. And I thought that was really beautiful. I did like their bit with the the doll on the stage <laughs> yeah. and green go and <laughs> that was well done. Like a would they say like a television producer or yeah. something? Yeah, that was that was really fun. Of, of all the bits, that was one of the better ones. I have a quick question. I want to go uh, sure. back to Zendaya when she talked about how it was such a safe environment. Any chance that's a veiled shot at Barbie? Or am I just trying to stir the pot here, you think? I think you're just trying to stir the pot. I think she was being genuine in that, you know, it, these are very difficult subject matters that that show is dealing with and her character in particular. I thought her speech was really beautiful and talking about, you know, if Rue has touched you and that, you know, all of the stories that she has heard from fans of the show that she carries them with her. And I think that that's more where she was coming from in terms of uh, having it be a safe space. Um, I I choose to not look deeper than that. So that's fine. <laughs> I do like. Um, I don't like my sauce to burn though, so I like to stir the pot. I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. And uh, I'm just gonna say this: every time I watch an award show and. Steve Martin Short, that's what I call them combined, and <laughs> Selena uh, uh, Selena Gomez are on stage together. I can't stop watching them, and I don't know why we haven't watched Only Murders in the Building right now, because the three of them together, it just seems like magic. It's a fantastic chemistry that they have. I definitely, as soon as we catch up on Abbott Elementary, I think Only Murders needs to be our next show for sure. Not Hacks? No, I th- I want it to be only murders first. Okay, uh, we've got more to catch up with there, I think. And I, every time I see them, I just wish they were hosting the show. Yeah, like I don't understand why they haven't hosted like the Oscars or the Emmys or whatever together. Because, I mean, we know that Steve Martin and Martin Short are a great duo, but the addition of Selena Gomez, which is just like the most random thing that you could think of, works so well. But it's really not. The girls got incredible comedic oh, timing yeah and i i don't say that to knock anything in her i just it's when i re- i remember when we first heard about only murders and like the pairing of that and it's like that's so random but okay i'm sure it'll be great and it it seems to be working for them but i'm yeah. excited to check out the show it was really cool uh for the lead actor category four of the six men nominated or snl alums yeah we had you know martin short steve martin jason sudeikis that nobody else has really been a part of for years except for like this year as a black lady uh sketch show and in previous years we've had like uh key and peel or like the Chappelle right, show right. but this show dominates this ca- it just seems like the category was simply created for lauren michaels to win shouldn't it just be thrown in with other comedies i think that's a bigger conversation for a different day that i'm not prepared to take on at 11 30 at night on a monday but i don't disagree with you entirely i think it's a strange dynamic and it just seems really specific yeah right where you know like we have reality competition shows they've also done one for like reality like well you know and that makes sense because there's multiple versions of those shows in different categories and it's very diverse right you have shows like uh rupaul's drag race uh um and you know uh amazing race and all those different things coming together that are wildly different that competing in the same category yeah but snl just seems to be for lack of fighting itself and it just seems a lot of years yeah yeah and but we never see the actors get due i don't remember anyone from the show winning like kate mckinnon absolutely could have won this year for best you know i think she may have won last year 
Did she? I think so. I have like a vague memory of her winning, but I could be wrong. Okay. Well, Kate McKinnon should win everything. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. All right. Well, that's another Emmys come and gone. Um, next year, I'm sure the landscape will look somewhat similar because I don't think we're losing that many of these shows. But well, I, this was the last season for Ozark. Yeah. So that'll be gone. Julia Gardner got a win. That was huge. True. So that was the a send off for that show that no one else really got nominated for. And you did say that. Well, they were nominated. They didn't win. Yes. She was the only one who won from the show. Yes. Uh, and you said that Bobby Odenkirk and the Better Call Saul. They'll be, they'll be eligible for one more year. Okay. Yeah. I hope he gets one for his swan song because Bob has had to see that at me. Even by. though you haven't watched the show. Yeah, but I love Jimmy McGill. Like, <laughs> and Saul, like I and Bob Odenkirk. He's just, it's such a great character. I can't imagine him getting worse after breaking that. Fair enough. All right. Any final thoughts? More time for speeches. I agree. More time for speeches. That's that's I think the the main point that we always want to yeah. And then just keep it simple. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. These shows are entertaining because you have entertaining people up there. Chill with the bits, chill with the silly format. Just Yeah. Do what works. Just celebrate the art form. That's enough. Correct. So all right, guys, thanks for joining us for this reactions episode to the 2022 Emmys. Uh, let us know your thoughts on our social media, BSLS podcast on Instagram. Uh, what did you think of the winners, the losers, and uh, the show overall? All right, guys, that is a wrap. You've been listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between with Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. With the entertainment space as crowded as it is now, it's nice to have a podcast that doesn't hold back their takes from new releases to older movies and everything in between. We got you covered. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And until next time, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And we can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and iHeart. See you next time on Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. Yeah.